Welcome to my lecture online. So now let's talk about gravity on a planet. What determines how much gravity a planet has? Well, what we can do is start with the equation of gravity that was derived by Newton. We have an object, like a person, on top of a planet. The person gets pulled towards the planet by the force of gravity. And here's the equation that defines that. There's the gravitational constant g times the mass of the person times the mass of the planet divided by the radius squared. And the radius is basically from the center mass of the person to the center mass of the, of the planet. We can probably ignore this small little distance right there. It's basically the radius of the planet. Now we're going to manipulate that equation just a little bit to give us more of a feel for what gravity actually is, or at least in terms of how it affects, how gravity is affected by the shape, the size, and the density of the planet. So what we've done here is we've rewritten the equation of gravity, but we've separated the mass of the planet and the radius of the planet squared separately there. And then we're going to look at the definition of the density of an object. The density, we use the Greek letter rho for that, is equal to the ratio of the mass divided by the volume. So if we're talking about the density of a planet, it would be the mass of the planet divided by the volume of the planet, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, if we rearrange things a little bit and we factor out an m and an r squared, then this becomes 1 over 4 thirds pi r times the quantity m over r squared, which is the quantity that we have over there. You can see the similarity. Now, if we have the density equal to this quantity right there, we can then solve for m over r squared in terms of density, and so m over r squared becomes 4 thirds pi r times the density of the planet r being the radius and rho being the density. And if we then take this quantity right here and we substitute it in here instead of m over r squared, we now have the force of gravity, the force by which an object or a person gets pulled towards the planet is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the planet times 4 thirds pi r times rho. Or if we then factor out just the mass of the person, we have then the mass of the person times this quantity right here. Now notice that this is a constant, 4 thirds is a constant, and pi is a constant. So the only things that vary in that equation, besides of course the mass of the object, but if you talk about a single object, then the only thing that vary is the radius and the density, and that refers to the planet. In other words, the force by which an object gets pulled towards the planet depends upon how big the planet is and the density of the planet. So if we separate the size and the density like that, then we simply need to know how big the planet is. Of course, the bigger the planet, the more mass it has. The more mass it has, the stronger the gravitational force, and also the greater the density. So two objects that are the same size, like for example, Titan and Mercury are very similar in size, but Mercury is much more dense than Titan, so Mercury would then expect to have a much greater gravitational force than Titan. And that's how we compare things. Now, of course, we take a look at Jupiter. Jupiter is an enormous planet with a very big radius. And so, therefore, a big planet with a big radius will have a lot of mass, very strong gravitational force. The density is quite a bit less, so that would kind of diminish it a little bit. But the size of Jupiter, of course, causes it to have a very big gravitational force. Now, if we take a look at Newton's second law equation that says that the force is equal to the mass times acceleration, and we compare this equation to this equation, notice we have the m, that means that this quantity relates to the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of a planet. So we could then say that the acceleration on the surface of a planet is simply equal to what's inside the brackets here, g times 4 thirds pi times the radius of the planet times the density of the planet. Now, if we do an example of that with the Earth, we can say here, for the Earth, we take this quantity right here, which represents the acceleration due to gravity. And sometimes we use the small letter g for that. So the acceleration due to gravity, small letter g, is equal to the gravitational constant times 4 thirds pi times the radius of the planet times the density of the planet. So in the case of the Earth, we have the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meters squared per kilogram squared. That's the constant we need in the universal equation of gravity. 4 thirds times pi times the radius of the Earth in meters 
times the density of the Earth, which is 5,520 kilograms per cubic meters. We multiply all that together, we get approximately 9.81 meters per second squared, which, by the way, is the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth. So you can see then that the acceleration due to gravity depends upon the size of the planet, which means the mass of the planet, and the density of the planet. So on Earth, your weight would be your mass times acceleration. Let's say you have a mass of 60 kilograms. There's the acceleration due to gravity, which comes from this equation right here. That means you would have a weight of 589 newtons. So again, how do you determine what the gravitational force is on a planet? You simply need to know how big the planet is, how much mass it has, and how dense the planet is. And that will determine the acceleration due to gravity. In other words, that will determine the force of gravity on the surface of the planet. So now let's go see how this affects Mercury in comparison to some of the other planets and some of the moons. We'll do that in our next video.